let's start with the game that well i don't know if it was game of the show necessarily but it's a game that both of us are very excited about and that is metaphor re oh i thought you we were gonna go for another one yes metaphor i got to stream that from the sega booth which was really cool they gave me three 15 minute demos that i could play and it cut off immediately after 15 minutes so i didn't realize that i thought it was kind of a 15 minute kind of segment but it was no properly off very timely. very timely one of them was like an exploration demo the other one was a battle a dungeon demo <clears throat> and then the third one was a boss i want to say okay. and yeah it was it was very persona if i mean it's obviously made by the persona folks i was gonna say just to sort of run down what what the game is this is the next game from atlas which is the developer who made persona and shin megami tensei which are games that are have been around persona's been late 90s i think was the first one uh shin megami tensei has been around since late 80s so they, these are really long series and metaphor is kind of the first new thing that they've done in a really long time. I think Persona 5 was 2016. And last year was Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. I think that was last year. Other than that, they've done a lot of re-releases, a lot of spin-offs, a lot of sequels. This is the first game in ages that is brand new for them. And it uses a lot of the same systems from Persona and, and Shin Megami Very Tensei. <clears throat> but it has... A lot of advancements that are showing what they're looking at doing next and it has a high fantasy setting so it's completely different to like the modern japan that you know from persona this is proper fantasy and it's kind of the first time they've really done that which for me is why it's so exciting but yeah yeah so tell us more about the demo that you played yeah the first bit was the exploration and i had to go from one place to another and is, is it open world Oh, it's not open world, but it's just like a giant world map that you can go and explore wherever you want, I guess. Yes. So I'll, I'll say that I also played it, not at Gamescom. You might remember I was away a couple of weeks ago uh, and I went to New York and I got to play about three hours of Metaphor, um, which was different to what you played. I played 45 minutes. Um, so I won't go too much into what I played, but I can give some background. Um, there is a massive world map. Yes, it is huge. The way the game works is that it has a calendar system like Persona, but Persona is set in like one town and you go by day by day to decide what to do. In Metaphor, there's a huge world map and you still have a calendar, but you will have certain quests, missions, whatever, and it will say, right, this is going to take you two days to travel to where, to where you get yes. there and then however long to do it and then however long to go back. And so you have to decide, well, do I do that mission that takes three days or do I do this mission that takes one day? And you have to align it in the calendar, but choose where you go in what order as you explore this world map. And so it's kind of a step on from what Persona does. And that's what I really, really, really love. And I've played games. And I've, anybody that's listened to the podcast before, I've had criticisms before of when when you play like a big fantasy epic and you can just fast travel from one side of the world to the other instantly, like in Final Fantasy 16, you just don't get that scale of it being an incredibly, incredibly like huge world map. It's one of the reasons why I love 10 because it's literally, it's quite linear. It's very linear, but you're going on this epic journey <clears throat> and you can't just quickly whiz back to the, the place that you started at very quickly. Whereas this, I, yeah, I needed to go to a graveyard or somewhere or some kind of um, mausoleum or whatever. But I, on the way there, you can then have your conversations with your party, with uh, oh, what was it, Hulkenberg, not Nico, yeah. not no. the F1 driver. <laughs> so she uh, was. Uh, She's very cool. She was very cool. But yeah, we went on like the top of the deck of this ship to go and talk about just just get close to each other and, and you know to to increase our bond. Similarly, similarly to in Persona yeah. Five is is probably like the one I've got the most uh, recollection of playing. So that, that was really cool, but like, it's the first thing that hit me was the music. I thought the music is just incredible. I adore the battle music. It's so, so good. Over the top it's in like, a great way. It's 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 got this like chanting and it's like <laughs> kind yes, of like I chanting stuff that like builds and builds and builds and then it just mm. soars into this like orchestral da, 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 all this choral music and it's just it's so 
for me, like that battle music kind of epitomizes the vibe of the game that it's just grand and operatic and extravagant and mm. big, this big epic fantasy saga in a way that Persona is kind of set in the real world, but with interesting fantasy parallels. And it's yes. all very cool and funky. Whereas this is just over the top fantasy, like yeah. huge. It's amazing. It was that chanting did remind me of the Eurovision Norway entry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for ruining it now. And yeah, but then when you go out to the, because obviously you can go and explore the ship as you're traveling. And I went outside. Is it a ship? Well, I went outside <laughs> and was like, oh, this ship. And I'm sure if you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably already shown it by now or about to go outside. Um, it showed like giant legs it walks it's, it's a, ship a walker on, it's a walker you is it a ship with legs or what i'm i couldn't i didn't pay too much attention it's it literally has war uh, has legs oh i know so I it's, it's no it's sorry it's called a runner okay. it's called a runner is what it is i'm pretty sure the so what's cool about the game as well is that there are multiple artists that have designed different elements of the game okay. and i'm pretty sure the runners were designed by the same guy that did um evangelion which is super famous anime, um, whose name I has escaped me, but I'm pretty sure he designed the runners in this. Okay, so that's why they have that sort of techy me mechanical kind of vibe, but then other bits of the game are really fantasy, and then other bits are sort of almost sci-fi, but not like it's this really unique mismatch of different styles that somehow works. I do wonder if this is going to be the start of a new series. Oh, 100% it will be. I mean, the fact it's called Metaphor Refantastic, is it going to be Metaphor blah, blah, blah in the future? Yeah, maybe. Metaphor is the new name of them. Yes. I it just It's going to be my handheld game the second that comes out. It's going to be my game that I play when we were in Japan and we're yep. traveling places and we're waiting for you to have a shit. I will be playing. Yeah, on the Steam Deck, it better run on the Steam Deck. I'll tell them that now. Mm. So it better run well on that. I'm sure it does because Persona 5 is incredible and they, they seem to be very good at, at making games that yeah. are verified. I will say, on a technical level, I don't think it necessarily looks the best. No, it was a bit... Um, well. It's quite it's quite basic in some areas, but artistically, it's incredible. It's yeah. this, like I said, it's this huge mix of styles, and I don't know how many there were in what you played, but the bit I played was um, from the very beginning of the game, and there are a lot of anime cutscenes that sort of jump in at lots of points, but it really gives that feel that you are playing this epic anime film yeah. and it feels very cinematic. And there's a super cool bit where the main guy like finds his powers, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, he finds his powers, which is very similar to Persona where he rips the mask off. There's a very similar kind of thing, but it's, I would just, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, this is just so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. that, like, if you love anime, like you have to play this game basically. Yeah. It, it's phenomenal. And I was... We'll, we'll talk about maybe the battles a bit. Cause I yeah, love, tell me about the battles. I love that when you're fighting some kind of small, like, minor enemy, you don't need to go into the full kind of turn-based battle sequence. Yes. It's very much like you can just go and whack it and, and kill it uh, quickly. That is essentially, like, an extension of Persona. Mm -hmm. So in Persona, you can run up to things and hit them to initiate battle, and you do an extra attack. Yeah. In this, it's essentially you can keep hitting them to just kill them easily yeah it's only for low level enemies yeah but it keeps the pace up and it means that grinding you can just run around and kill everything really easily yeah. or you can then hit a button to go into the turn-based battles which yeah. is a bit more traditional and you can still do that you can still even the ones because you it's similar to persona in that you can detect the threat level so it's kind of easy medium and, and hard or whatever and i think it's i don't know if it's the medium and the hard ones or just the hard ones i can't remember but you can hit it a few times to stun it and then go into uh, a battle, which is similar uh, to the ambush, I guess, in, yeah, exactly. uh, in Persona 5. But that was cool. Now, tell me more about it, because I was... Obviously, 15 minutes, you can't really understand a whole battle sequence, especially when it's thrown you in quite far into the game with all these new extras, and you're like, I don't know what all of this is necessarily. Yeah. What is the difference? Because there's some that you have your what I will call personas, those moves. And okay. then there's some kind of fusions or something. Okay. So let, tell me about Let me explain. Yes. So when you go into the turn-based battles, it looks very stylish in a, in similar to Persona, where you've got different buttons for your different options and it's all sort of shooting out of your character. Like it's The menu system is incredible, as you would expect from Atlas. Now, 
you've got your basic attack, which is just hitting with a weapon. You then have what are called archetypes. And archetypes are essentially personas. <laughs> yes. Um, whereas in, in persona, it's like the, the, the enemies that you fight, you can capture them and sort of evolve them. Which is different, isn't it? it yeah, which is different. In metaphor, you have archetypes which are based on the inner heroism of the characters. So as I sort of hinted at a minute ago, when the main character finds his inner hero, it emerges as an archetype. Now, the archetypes are essentially classes that you would get in any fantasy game. You've got your healer, your warrior, your rogue, whatever else. And the way that you get more of those is through your relationships with the characters. So when you're on your runner and you're chatting to your teammates and you become closer to them, you then unlock new archetypes. And what's different, and I'm pretty sure I'm right on this, is that any character can have any archetype, I think. I might be wrong on that. I might be wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but in Persona, only your main character can switch Personas, mm. so your party members feel quite set. Whereas in this, I think there's a lot more customization, I think. Um, and so you can then evolve those archetypes to, you know, you level them up through battle and then you evolve them into new versions that unlock new moves. Yeah. So it gives you a lot more depth, I think, than, than Persona in that way. So they they are your essentially like persona, but they're called archetypes. And you go into a place that's similar to the Velvet Room where you can manage them. It's like a place in your head, all of that kind of stuff. So it feels quite personary, but it's archetypes, it's inner heroism, it's a fantasy version of it. And then the other thing that you mentioned there is called synthesis. And essentially that is where you can combine your moves with those of another character. So what that might be is maybe your healer character can heal with the archetype moves, can heal one person. But if you select synthesis, it combines it with another character's move and allows you to heal the party, but not just one character. Or maybe there are two different characters' attacks that combine into something cool. It reminds me a little bit of Chrono Trigger, which has techniques that work similarly. Um, but what that means is that depending on the party members you have, the archetypes that you have set, you're going to have different synthesis moves. So between all of that, synthesis is something that isn't really in Persona either. Mm. So that's something new that, again, adds depth to the makeup of your party and how you customize it. So there are little elements between that and the action stuff that you mentioned. The battle system feels like a bit of a step on from what Persona is. It's, it's similar. It feels quite familiar. You'll jump straight into it and know what you're doing. But there are new elements to it that I think make it feel different enough from what we've had before cool and yeah so i played a bit of the dungeons i went in a little it looked i mean i didn't get to see that much of it uh, well just as well all the dungeons are handcrafted okay so there's no like random dungeon like you get in persona where it's just randomly generated Memento, all the different floors yeah. and all of that there's none of that there are loads of dungeons but they're all individual Excellent. Well, that is coming out. Well, do you have anything else to say about that? I fucking loved it. Yeah. Um, it is all. Uh, I, get, I didn't play it at Gamescom, so for me, it's not my game of the show, but it is the game I am most looking forward to playing this year. It's out in October. Yes. Um, and it's just, for me, it is, it is, it has the core of Persona, but it's different enough that it still feels like its own thing, mm -hmm. which I'm really excited about. Brilliant. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll probably see there's a lot more left, and we'll ju I'll just leave on my uh, my stream of where I played it. But, yeah, that is... That's Metaphor, and I'm, yeah, very much looking forward to that coming out. Very, very much. 